All right, so this is another week of, uh, I'm at the tail end of this cold that I got. So instead of showing up to record in person, we're doing one more week of this uh, recording online stuff, which turned out okay last week, ultimately. Once I got all the pieces together, it sounded pretty good. It's just uh, tricky for us to figure out what the heck we're doing. So because of that, because we still have all these weird tech hurdles, I didn't want to do anything too long again. I just wanted to try to find something nice and quick. We could just watch a quick, watch one little show, get in, get out. And, uh, you know, it's kind of tough because we always do, like, maybe the first and last episode or stop in in the middle of something or whatever, you know, we make things more complicated than they need to be. But I had this idea for this thing we could do to just uh, watch one quick little thing. So we watched that show last month, It's About Time, that was made by the same guy, Sherman Schwartz, who made uh, Gilligan's Island. And it came at around the same time, I think because Gilligan's Island was popular, he got to make this other show. And it's just weird, too, because that's the one where our recorder broke. It's the worst sounding episode we ever had, but it got all these views on YouTube because everybody remembers that, that terrible show from when they were a kid. But half of that episode, we talked about Gilligan's Island rather than It's About Time, because It's About Time was not a very pleasant show to watch. <laughs> and uh, So I thought we could do Gilligan's Island, but again, I didn't want to just sit here and do Gilligan's Island all day long. But what I found out is... This is another neat thing about doing these dives into TV past, is we get to watch weird stuff, like, just because of the internet. All this stuff is available that was really hard to get originally. So instead of doing a deep dive into Gilligan's Island, because it also doesn't even have a final episode, it's yet another one of those cases where they thought there was going to be another season and there wasn't, so they didn't even make, like, a final episode where they get off the island. They did do a TV movie later, but again, now we're getting into, like, watching the show, watching a TV movie, like... Pretty much any show you pick, you can just go down the rabbit hole forever. But the way I'm going to get us out of jail with Gilligan's Island, and this is actually kind of neat, I think, is it turns out there was a pilot episode. Gilligan's Island ran in uh, 1964, it started, for 98 episodes, ran for three seasons. But in 1963, they made a pilot episode where a bunch of the actors are different. And because there were so many different actors, they didn't air it until 29 years later. They finally played it on TV. So I thought, why don't we just watch the Gilligan's Island pilot so we get a little taste of Gilligan's Island, but just one episode and, and we're done. Okay. I saw that remake. That, re that remake where they went back to the island all those years later, that TV special or something. I saw that. How was it? Mm-mm. Right. Yeah, it was okay. It was, it was okay. Well, that's where I was slightly worried about Gilligan's Island in general, because the whole time we were watching It's About Time, you know, we were saying like, ah, oh, man, it's sure, it's sure no Gilligan's Island. But to be honest, I haven't seen Gilligan's Island since I was a little kid, because it was, you know, in reruns in the 80s when I was a kid. I loved it back then, but I was like, it's maybe one of those things I didn't know if I wanted to go back to, because It's About Time was so bad that I was thinking like, is Gilligan's Island also, you know, worse than I remember? <laughs> you know, like, I kind of just don't want to know. Yeah, I, I've seen a few of them over the years, and they're corny. But, but I mean, there's nobody can replace Thurston Howell and Lovey. You know, they're, they're just, <laughs> and Ginger. You know, they're just characters that are so unique in their own selves. Yeah, so that's another reason why I think this pilot is going to be interesting, because this is, again, we can watch it, and if it does happen to be bad, we can just uh, lock off that part of our brains and be like, ah, oh, it was just the pilot. I'm sure Gilligan's Island is still a good show, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, nostalgia, is, sometimes it is better left in the past. And, and I'm not saying Gilligan's Island is bad, I'm just saying it might be, and I, I would rather just remember it being a great show, you know? But this pilot, let me just give you the rundown on this. So the pilot episode, Marooned, was filmed in November 1963. The pilot featured seven characters, as did the series, but only four of the characters and their associated actors made it into the series proper. So it has Gilligan, it has the Skipper, and it has the Howells. But the three characters who did not carry forward from the pilot were two secretaries and a high school teacher. So in the pilot, the scientifically inclined professor was instead a high school teacher, played by John Gabriel. Instead of Ginger the movie star, there was still a red-haired Ginger, but she worked as a secretary and was played by Kit Smythe. And then Marianne from Kansas, the Kansas farm girl, instead was Bunny, Ginger's co-worker, played as a cheerful dumb blonde by Nancy McCarthy. Mm. 
So, uh, oh, and there's a different theme song, that famous Gilligan, uh, Gilligan's Island theme song. Instead, there's two Calypso-style tracks written by John Williams. Yeah, and I guess we'll see, because, I mean, it's one of the most famous TV theme songs of all time, so I guess we also get to hear the first crack at the theme song that apparently wasn't good enough. So, we're watching sort of Gilligan's Island, but we're going to watch, like, Gilligan's Island from another dimension, where <laughs> things are a little bit different, where the professor is not there, Ginger's not there, Marianne's not there. Instead, there's some, some school teacher and his secretaries. Okay. <laughs> it's funny, too, so uh, those names I mentioned, like... Uh, the, the one who plays the original Ginger, she doesn't have a link on Wikipedia. Like, not, not famous enough to have an entry, so who knows if she even did anything else. <laughs> the lady who plays uh, Bunny, the replacement for Marianne, she did have a link. So I was like, okay, let's see what she did. And the first line is, most famous for playing uh, Bunny in the unaired pilot of, of <laughs> Gilligan's Island. It's like, are you even allowed to use the word famous at that point if you're most famous for being in the pilot episode of a show that didn't air until 29 years after you filmed it? <laughs> like, uh, that's, I think I'm more famous than that. You know? <laughs> with my YouTube channel with 300 subscribers. Like that's, that's stretching. That's stretching the term. Did we ever watch the pilot episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Uh, I don't think so. That would actually, if we if we do need another quick week, a tech test week or something, we should watch that sometime because it's also only half an hour, and everybody is in it except Willow. Willow was played by some other actress, and uh, it's the exact same thing with her. She went on to work for like, uh, I don't know, she does like uh, charity stuff, and she's had a fine life. But as an actress, it's the same thing. Most famous for being the other Willow, <laughs> the Willow in the unaired Buffy pilot. Yeah, how famous is that? <laughs> I mean, yeah, because that's where I, I feel like even saying most famous, it's like you're probably more famous in your neighborhood for just being the lady who lives in that house <laughs> than you are for being in these shows that never got aired. Yeah, it's not really a claim to fame. Yeah, yeah, it's polite at best. So, uh, yeah, so anyway, now we'll just uh, watch this episode of Gilligan's Island. Uh, unfortunately, if anyone wants to watch along with us. I'll double check, but I don't think this is on YouTube. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't look like the full episode of this pilot is on YouTube, but there's there's clips from it. There's uh, little bits, so you can at least get a sense of it. But to watch the whole thing, you know, it's part of one of those like DVD box sets you gotta buy of the entirety of Gilligan's Island. They threw this on as a bonus. Or you can uh, steal it, which is what I did. <laughs> or you can time travel back to TBS when they aired it 29 years after. Uh, all right, so anyway, let's throw this thing on, and then we'll stop back in after to see how we liked it. In tropical sea is a tropic port. Vacation fun is the favorite sport. This is the place where the tourists flock, renting the boats at the busy dock. Two secretaries from USA sail on the Mino this lovely day. A high school teacher is next aboard, all taking trips that they cannot afford. The next two people are millionaires. They got no worries, they got no cares. They climb aboard and they step inside with just enough bags for a six hour ride. Tourists come, tourists go, tourists touring to and fro. These five nice tourists, they take this trip, relaxing on deck on this little ship. The weather is clear and the sun is hot. The weather is clear? I think it is not. Tourists come, tourists go, tourists tossing to and fro. The captain is brave, he's... Caramba! What a storm! The captain is brave, he's a fearless man, and Gilligan helps him all that he can. The wheel she break and lose all control, SS me no do the rock and roll. The sea is now calm and the weather grand. Where is the Mino upon the sand? What happened now will bring you a smile. The adventures of Gilligan and the skipper and the millionaire and Mrs. Millionaire and the other tourists on Gilligan's Island. 
So I think one of the most interesting things about that was hearing that weird theme song. I think I'm going to probably put the entire theme song in the podcast because I'm sure that's something most people have not heard. And it was so weird because it was just like that Harry Belafonte, you know, you know, uh, what's his song? The, uh, Calypso. Yeah, but just that it's exactly one of those types of songs, that, but but it's the Gilligan's Island story. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know, that's a, that was, that was kind of neat. That was weird to hear. But I mean, I guess they couldn't use it because it distinctly references the uh, high school teacher <laughs> and his secretaries, for one thing. But that'd be kind of interesting. I don't know why. I mean, obviously, the it's kind of the right choice because the other Gilligan's Island theme is so famous, but, but they're both kind of good. Yeah, I wonder why they felt they had to change it. Yeah, I mean, it's always weird, though. It's like the, you can never really guess <laughs> unless somebody does like at least nowadays i guess they do all these behind the scenes stuff but nobody back then did so yeah who knows and especially just to crap on it's about time again remember that annoying it's about time it's about space <laughs> like that show couldn't have one good theme song and gilligan's island has two good theme songs <laughs> like, <laughs> like definitely i mean i wouldn't say that was the greatest thing in the world it really is just kind of wow gilligan sure is dumb but it's so much more just a pleasant scenario instead of being around all these cavemen that are monosyllabic and annoying like being on a, a beautiful tropical island with a bunch of wacky characters you know it's at least a fun fun idea and especially since everybody else is rather has has a rather serious mode to them but gilligan's obviously the foil throughout the whole thing and uh He's exactly like he was in the actual TV series. Yeah. Everybody was. Right down to the sexy girl. Yeah, they didn't really change much with like the professor and stuff besides the actors. It's basically the same sort of paradigm. Except I guess Marianne isn't so much uh, dumb. She's just more uh, naive or kind of, you know, just a nice country girl. But but it is just better. And Ginger, the actress, is they definitely did an improvement by taking this Ginger character, who is really not that much different than the other girl. Um, well, you know, she's not as dumb, but but Ginger as the uh, the the Marilyn Monroe type uh, really does a fabulous job in the series, and she roams around in evening dresses and all this stuff. Yeah, and it is just funny that. Uh... Like, even just watching it, we were like, so this guy, he's a high school teacher. You know, it's unlikely he'd have a secretary anyway, maybe if he was the principal, but he has two secretaries. <laughs> like, it's just weirdly lazy. It's like they just kind of, uh, uh, even the theme song, I noticed, you know, it uh, shows everybody at the end, like, starring Bob Denver, and, and it didn't even show the other three. It's like, and the other ones, the other characters, whatever. <laughs> like... Like, it definitely, it's just weird that they put zero thought into that. So, yeah, it was definitely an improvement to bring everybody else in. And you can't really tell from this one episode if they were any good as actors, but yeah, it feels like they did the right thing. It's just, I don't know, all that stuff is neat. I do wish I could find out more about that transition period of, you know, what makes you fire this person and what makes you change the theme song. And, like, all that behind-the-scenes stuff is so interesting, but... Just, uh, you know, it's a loss of time. It was a long time ago <laughs> that they made these shows. <laughs> Where, yeah, we definitely have to do that Buffy pilot sometimes because that one, you know, it's, it's, uh, it makes me feel a little bad for the lady who was the original Willow, but it's not at all confusing in that case. It's like, yep, you're the one person who doesn't fit in at all. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Everyone else is staying and not you. Yeah, the two secretaries are probably the weak points in that pilot. And, and, and to change them into two characters who were so completely different, uh, because Marianne and Ginger are very, very different. Uh, Ginger in the TV series is, uh, you know, she puts that breathy act on. She can get things just by putting on her acting skills. She can get anything she wants, and she does. Whereas I can't really buy that. This one, you know, the, the dumb blonde one, you know, that's, you know, how many times has that been done? And the other girl really doesn't stand out as anything remarkable. Yeah, in a way, I guess there's uh, not a ton to say about this exactly because, you know, it is just Gilligan's Island. We're all very familiar with it. But, yeah, it's kind of neat to see. I guess, though, it is that classic, like, you know, they, oh, now we fired our last bullet. And after Gilligan messing up for the last 15 straight minutes, he's like, hey, don't worry, I got extra bullets. I kept them dry during the storm. And like, oh, great, Gilligan, you did great. And you can just see from a mile away, he's just going to dump all the bullets in the fire and ruin all the bullets seconds later. <laughs> it's just like, 
Oh, yeah, that's right. That is what this show was about. It's just everybody being annoyed. Although I was impressed with how many fish Gilligan caught, which kind of helps explain why they didn't all die. Apparently, he's an amazing fisherman. He can catch sharks. He can catch giant fish. Just all kinds of crap. Yeah, but then he's too stupid to realize that one of them's got a radio in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so predictable. You see, you see that you see the jokes coming from a mile off, but they're still amusing and funny. They're not like they're corny, but they're not like in that just about time, which was uh, I, I can't even comment on that one. Like you saw, <laughs> you saw things coming there too, but they they weren't funny. Yeah, it was brutal. It is weird though in this one too. I don't. Maybe they did this in the series proper, but I don't remember it. But there was actually a scene where uh, a plane flew by overhead. And then, you know, Gilligan messes up with the help sign, but whatever. But even that, I feel like, is a little bit weird to even bring that up because it's insane that they were trapped on this island for three years to begin with. Like, the SS Minnow is this tiny little boat. How many, how far away could it have gotten in this storm? Like, you know, it's just ludicrous that these people were never found. Hundreds of miles, the skipper said. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Hundreds of miles. Now you got to buy that. you got to believe that. I guess if they got picked up in like a typhoon and carried away like in an old Looney Tunes cartoon. <laughs> but uh, but having a plane fly by overhead, I mean, maybe it was a... Well, no, they said at that point that the search had already been given up. So that's like an extra bad thing to bring up because that suggests that they're under a flight path. If one plane flew by, another one's going to go by eventually. <laughs> So it's probably better that they just were like, nah, actually, let's not bring that up. Let's not bring up the idea of planes, because this is already pretty tenuous to begin with. The thing everybody talked about over the years with Gilligan's Island, yes, you did see uh, in this pilot when the Howells were boarding the, the ship, their man was carrying aboard some suitcases, you know, for four or five suitcases probably. Uh, but as the years went on, they had so many costumes and clothes and everybody would always say they were only going off for a three hour tour. Where did they get all this stuff from? I mean, they have to have brought trunks and trunks as if they were taking a transatlantic tour for six or seven weeks and eating at the captain's table and all that sort of stuff for the things that they had on that island that presumably uh, the Howells took with them. I mean, Ginger has more in the TV series, like fabulous uh, sequined gowns that she's, I, well, I think she actually, supposedly, maybe she wore that on the boat that day. But but they people talked about that for years, about the stuff that they had, considering they were going on a three-hour tour on a small little boat. It's amazing. But that's just something you just suspend belief and, and enjoy it. Yeah, the one thing that kind of stuck through to my generation, I don't know why this one reference keeps coming up so often, but it's that the professor at some point made a radio out of coconuts. Because, <laughs> like, that's just so beyond anything that would be possible that, you know, to make something that complicated out of coconuts. And yet, they couldn't get off this stupid island. They're like, I don't know, I feel like at that point, why don't you just make a helicopter out of palm trees? Like, apparently you can transmute anything into anything else. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, this might be the kind of thing that a modern reboot of uh, Gilligan's Island might be tough because, uh, cause, yeah, you would just wouldn't be able to be this silly. Modern audiences would, would have, you know, again, they would have those same questions, but I don't know if they would put up with it anymore. They'd be like, what the heck is this? Yeah, and sometimes it's, uh, you can't remake these things. When you look back, there was a time of innocence, more or less. Not that the world, the world was a pretty bad place, even even in those days and, and before, but because people didn't have so much access to just things in the world, and there was just not the technology that we have today, that you can suspend belief and enjoy those shows if if you imagine yourself in that time and at that place and knowing what existed. You can, you can yeah, enjoy it. Whereas if you try to remake it today, people just, ah, oh, that couldn't, ah, oh, come on. Like, I can't buy that at all. But you can if you go back a few generations and and watch this stuff. Yeah, you can completely buy it. But it has to be in that time and that place. 
And it is kind of, yeah, it's fun in a way. It's like a bounty commercial, you know, that like perfect sand and the perfect palm trees. It's like, it's the fun version of being shipwrecked. <laughs> it's not Lord of the Flies. It's like, ah, oh, this actually might be kind of fun. Just get to hang out and yeah, you got to put up with Gilligan, but that's a small price to pay for this, uh, this beautiful, beautiful place. But they don't ever seem to be faced. You're not worried that they're going to starve to death or die of thirst or that if uh, some wild animal comes out of the, it's going to kill them. You, you know, there's none of that. It's just, they're just there. <laughs> and you get a kick out of it. Yeah, it would actually be really, be really weird to do like a, uh, I don't know, like a, a dark, serious modern reboot. Like it, there's this show Riverdale that is, you know, it's based on Archie, you know, it's the town of Riverdale, but I haven't watched it myself, but apparently it's crazy. It's got like, you know, it's like super serious and all dark and crazy stuff's happening to people. And like, it'd be so funny to do a Gilligan's Island like that, where they're starving to death and going crazy. <laughs> Although I guess the way you could do it is you could have those scenes, like start and end of the episode is the harsh reality. And then the episode proper could be like, like maybe Gilligan's literally out of his mind. And to him, it's Gilligan's Island. <laughs> you know, it's like the fun whoop slide whistle noises and laugh tracks but the last thing I, although i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend they do that it's, it's yeah not everything needs to be remade it's it's kind of nice that gilligan's island never got remade but the last thing i wanted to bring up because i never knew this was a thing until we started doing this podcast we've actually never reviewed this show it just came up somewhere but the many loves of dobie gillis the show from a few years before this where bob denver he was basically uh he was shaggy he looked like shaggy had the little goatee he talked like shaggy just like this weird beatnik and uh i don't know i just think that's kind of funny because he's still it's not a huge stretch i guess but gilligan is way dopier and way dumber than his his previous character <laughs> and it's just it was interesting because i never knew that show even existed that that didn't stretch into my generation like gilligan's island did but you can accept gilligan and the things that he does and how people just kind of have to live with it like that because of that character he does an excellent job as coming across as the as as the dumb sidekick, who's always going to make mistakes. And if he makes some, if he has some success in the world, it's usually completely by accident. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's also to tie it back into that run of god awful shows we watched. But the uh, my mother, the car, how kind of the the famous anecdote about that is that that guy turned down a role in the Andy Griffith show and turn down the role of Gilligan to be in one of the worst sitcoms of all time. And it's like, wow, talk about terrible, terrible choices. But you can kind of see it. Like if he read this script and he's like, you want me to play that guy? You want me to play the guy that everyone hates who the whole show is just about how stupid he is? <laughs> like I can see why he didn't realize he was turning down an iconic role. Cause I bet on paper, it's like, I don't think I want to do that, <laughs> but but hey, instead the spoils went to Bob Denver and uh, and he'll be remembered for all time. Yeah, and there's no question Bob Denver does an excellent job on that. You completely can believe that he, that he is that silly. Whereas I don't know if that other that that was that Van Dyke guy, Dick Van Dyke's brother, um, Jerry Van Dyke, I think his name is. I don't know that that it could have been as successful with him. Maybe. Yeah, it's one of those things that comedy in general is kind of uh, harder than people give it credit for, you know, sort of harder than drama, and especially slapsticky, goofy comedy, you know? It's like so easy to not be good at that or to make it come off bad or cloying or annoying. And it's every once in a while like you get someone who's just perfect for the part, like the Howells, for example. <laughs> yeah. I said this at the very beginning. Like I couldn't imagine anybody else doing those parts. That Jim Backus is just... He's he's wonderful. He's just living in such another world, and Lovey isn't much much different. <laughs> I can't imagine other actresses pulling that off. Yeah, and they clearly thought that too, because like those are, they made it all. They made it through. I'm sure they didn't even question it. But that was my favorite line of the the show. Is just like, you know, uh, get to work, Howell. Work, Lovey. When's the last time I did work? Oh, never, darling. Oh, that's right. I got all my money from father. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like in the same way that Gilligan is just plain <laughs> yeah. stupid, yeah. they are also super duper one note stereotypes of just rich, 
you know, sort of out of touch people, <laughs> but it's awesome. And the professor in that one, now the difference between whether he was a high school teacher or he is the professor later in the te- in the regular TV show, that, that character is really not that much different. Either one of those men could play that part. And this guy, I didn't find him any different than the professor, actually. But the ginger definitely is is the yeah she she was an excellent change to make because she's just so beautiful and breathy and, and, can, and you know can just have these men wrapped around her finger and, and again very stereotype very very one level but she does a beautiful job that the, the ginger in the tv series this one this one didn't didn't she wasn't remarkable at all so that was a smart move to change. And with the professor, yeah, it's a very small difference because like you were saying, the characters are basically the same. But I do think it's kind of better because it's just weird that the the high school professor is still like the smartest guy in the room. It's just weird because my, my first inclination to hear someone's a high school science teacher would be to think like they probably suck. They're probably bad at it. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. why, why does this like... He's able to take two beautiful women on on a boat tour with him. Yeah. Mm, he's got something going on, that guy. Yeah, so it, it was it is a weird. I mean, the professor's probably the weirdest character of them all because it probably was a good thing to stereotype him up some more too, like make him more of just a professor. I don't know that they ever even say professor of what or from where. He's just the professor, <laughs> but he's still kind of like the same as this version. He still kind of has some some buttons undone on his shirt. Still pretty cool, dude. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it's just like he's he's kind of weird. Like he's like, well, who is this man? But just you just need a you need to have a smart guy. That's all. That's all. Yeah, that's all. And you don't need to have him identified as a high school teacher. No, just, just just vaguely the professor, Joe Smart Guy. That's all you need. So uh, I guess that we'll wrap that up for this week, but I'll end with the, the little tiny end song. It's just, you know, the same thing. Meet us next week here on Gilligan's Isle. They did that, except again, Harry Belafonte style, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just like. <laughs> so I'll throw that in just to cap things off, because, yeah, again, this was kind of interesting in general, but that song, that's awesome. I mean, I just... It's weird that that's not known at all. I feel like that that should be a little well more well known in pop culture that there was. I guess I guess I was gonna say I keep saying like this is a weird choice, but I guess it's just the island thing, right? That's all, just because they're on an island, so they they do the calypso music. It must be the reason. I have no idea, <laughs> but they changed it. Obviously, they changed it for some reason. Yeah, yeah, that's a weird thing too. I mean, that's sort of a different topic, but uh, like, when did uh, you know sitcoms stop? describing the sitcom in the song like i think by the 80s they still had sitcom theme songs but it, they didn't necessarily explain it it was just like perfect strangers or something it's just some song but it didn't didn't give you the whole rundown and then i think by the 90s they were just done with that in general and then i remember there was that show lost that came out in the 2000s where all it was for the opening was it just said the word lost and it made a, a spooky sound and it was like 14 seconds long, you know? Like, I think at that point people were like, that's enough of these freaking theme songs. But this one is long. That thing was like three minute entire song <laughs> just to explain. I Presumably though, they would have cut it down. That was just because it was the first one, I'm sure. But but the original, but the, the one in the TV series where the, the group sings, uh, it tells the whole story and it identifies... The professor, uh, it identifies all six of them. All the people, yeah. In it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it was the, the same length. But yeah, I don't know. That's one of those things that is, it's just kind of, uh, it's like quaint, kind of. It's kind of neat to listen to an old show and just remember like, oh yeah, every show used to have like a theme song. <laughs> <laughs> and they just, yeah, they just don't anymore. All right. Well, done the introduction. to, And it wasn't bad. The, that pilot was quite well, quite well done. Well, it was just, it was just Gilligan's Island with a couple of different people in it. <laughs> yeah. And I think our tech test went, you know, a little smoother than last time. It'll get a little smoother each time, theoretically, until we just know how to do this, but I think it went okay. So, all right, let's end off with some Calypso rhythms. We leave all our friends on this tropic shore. Perhaps they will be here forevermore. Maybe a rescue will set them free. Tune in next week, and then you will see... 